See, we already lost two people. Hello, everybody. I call to order this regular meeting at the Elk Grove Park District. Um, as president of the park board, I make the following determination. It is neither practical nor prudent to permit the public to physically attend tonight's park board meeting for the reason that the continuing pandemic threatens the health and well-being of the public in all or part of the jurisdiction of the district and because public participation uh, attendance at tonight's park board meeting is available via remote means through Google Meet as allowed by this year's COVID-19 related amendments to the Open Meetings Act and also due to the continuing restrictions on in-person gatherings posed by the gubernatorial orders and health related disaster declarations. For these reasons, I have concluded that it is unfeasible to allow the public to physically attend this evening's park board meeting. Therefore, tonight's park board meeting is being held for the public by remote virtual means and more specifically through the Google Meet platform for the information set forth on the posted agenda for this meeting. Kathy, can I have a roll call, please? President O'Malley? Here. Commissioner Cook? Here. Commissioner Walls? Here. Commissioner Biecki? Here. Commissioner Sauer? Here. I will now call to order the public hearing on the 2021 combined annual budget and appropriation ordinance. This ordinance has been on display and available for public inspection for the required 30 day period and notice of this public hearing was published at least seven days prior to this evening in compliance with the law. Are there any comments or questions from the commissioners? Are there any comments or questions from the public? There are no further comments or questions. The 2021 Combined Annual Budget and Appropriation Ordinance is on the agenda for consideration and adoption during tonight's regular meeting. I will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing. So moved. Second. A motion to adjourn the public hearing portion of tonight's meeting having been made and seconded may I have a roll call vote. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. Commissioner Crowder? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. The motion has passed and the public hearing on the 2021 combined annual budget and appropriation ordinance is adjourned. We are at approval of minutes. I've got two sets, February 11th, 2021. That's the committee of the whole, February 11th, 2021, the regular meeting. Do any commissioners or staff have any questions or comments regarding these two sets of minutes? Hearing none, all I need is an aye if you approve, nay if you don't. All aye. in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. five to nothing, Kathy. Public communication, comments from the audience. Would anybody like to address the board at this time? Correspondence, do any staff or commissioners have any correspondence they'd like to share with the general public? No. Recom I was laughing at John. Recommendations for acceptance approval. I need a motion to approve the purchase of a 2021 Ford F-450 from Curry Motors Fleet of Frankfort, Illinois, in the amount not to exceed $61,852 through the Suburban Purchasing Co-op. Uh, can, can I make a clarification on the sheet, the uh, invoice sheet is showing a 2020 on both of these bids. So are we, are we purchasing a 2020 or a 2021? The top left there. It's showing a 2020 models. F450. Yeah, I think there are 2021 models out, but I can confirm that. So, this invoice isn't correct. They're 2021, Tom. I get it. You know, I think this is a bad invoice. It's probably an old invoice. It's probably the invoice from when they staff submitted in August for <coughs> the capital. And they never updated the invoice thing. So I'm comfortable. I'll make sure, as long as you guys approve it, I'll make sure that we're getting a 2021 for it. Yep, and that's what the actual motion is for a 2021. So yeah. okay, if it's well, not one, then we would I'll make do sure it. we don't buy it. Okay. Just want to make okay. sure okay. before we do it. Yep, good catch. Motion or second? So moved. Second. Kathy, you battle it out with those two. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Bietti? Yes. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Next up, I need a motion and a second for the approval of the purchase of a 2021 Ford F-250 from Curry Motors Fleet of Frankfort, Illinois, in the amount not to exceed $32,613 through the Suburban Purchasing Cooperative. So, second. Questions or comments regarding this purchase? It's the same as the 21. <coughs> 20. Yep, noted. Roll call, please. 
I, wrote, I got one real quick question. How, how solid are those trade-in numbers? Uh, they're, they're, they mean they're as competitive as you're going to get. No, no, I mean, I mean that's the number. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not like they say, we, we're saying seven and it comes in five. No. It doesn't make a difference. I would approve no, it. Right. I'm just curious. They evaluate our trades based on mileage and photos and stuff. So the number in the write up, okay. that's what they're doing. Yeah, that's their. Yeah. I just want to make sure that it was yeah. that and that kind of speculative number that made it come out. If we were close to the budget, it might sway my. <laughs> but we're not so good. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. <clears throat> And a motion and a second for acceptance of a bid proposal from Folding Partition Services of Carroll Stream, Illinois, for the replacement of the Rainbow Falls Folding Wall Partitions in the amount of $39,425. So moved. Second. Any discussion regarding this topic? Roll call, please. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Okay, tonight we get to hear from the commissioners on committee reports. We will start with Commissioner Cook, capital projects, please. Uh, all I have to report is our discussion we had <coughs> at the committee of the whole meeting uh, regarding the dog park. Um, our first number one choice to have a uh, dog park of Woodland Meadows appears to be unlikely. Uh, our initial uh, response from the Forest Preserve District is that they hey, feel they have enough dog parks. They currently have three or operate three and are not looking at this time to add a fourth. Uh, we're going to continue to try and, uh, you know, see if we can change their minds at, uh, at the committee level. Uh, but right now it's not looking promising. So we're going to meet again as a committee and talk about uh, our possible other options for the location of the dog park. So more to come on that. And that ends my report on capitals. Any questions for Tom? Thank you, Tom. Finance Committee, Commissioner Sauter. Well, we have January results, so not really much to uh, to report here. But on the corporate fund, no property tax was collected in January, and we did collect eighty-six thousand nine hundred eighty-nine in replacement tax. All expense categories are under budget, despite the fact we didn't collect <coughs> property tax. We have a net loss year-to-date of one hundred fifty-seven thousand, compared to a budgeted loss of two hundred eighty-two thousand. So that's good. Um, <coughs> recreation fund. Uh, fees and emissions were 48,000 compared to a budget of 70. Program fees were 48,000 compared to a budget of 91,000. All expense categories are under budget, and yet our net loss of 130,000 compares to the budgeted loss of 286,000. Compares <coughs> favorably, I should say. Uh, golf fund, all expense categories are at or under budget. Believe it or not, in January we had zero rounds. <laughs> Uh, the golf fund has a net loss of 47000 compared to a budget loss of 51000 And that's my report. And it's going to be 50 on uh, Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Instead. 40s for 10 to 11 days. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Oh. Be a little wet. I don't know if the frost is going to get down long enough to. Any questions for Ralph? Thank you, Ralph. Committee of the Whole, that's myself. Um, we met for an hour and a half on February 11th. Uh, multiple subjects. Uh, the first one was a discussion on the intergovernmental agreement we made with District 214. Uh, that's uh, shared usage not only of their field house and some of the assets that the high school has and what we'd be offering in regards to park district amenities. Uh, then we had a discussion on employee usage benefits. This was led by Director Green providing the new proposed usage benefits. Um, they are streamlined um, so that there's more continuity and understanding between IMF employees, full-time employees, and part-time employees. And one of the goals of this new usage benefits was actually to enhance our program so that we may be more competitive and attract a lot of the part-time workers that may be looking all over under a, a tight budget. We had a discussion on our master plan. This was our five-year action plan with the big list. Um, it was led by Ben. That's been ongoing. Commissioner Cook has talked about it a bit with his capitals projects. 
We had a lengthy discussion on Thorgard. This is our lightning detection system. <clears throat> on that particular night, which was two weeks ago, there was a consensus to no longer be involved in the lightning detection system that we had. We directed staff to go ahead and take it down. Um, that particular message may has made it back to the village and I can talk about that a little bit more under new business. Um, tennis court lighting. Uh, for a couple of years now, there's been a couple of commissioners trying to work out an agreement with District 214 to see if we can get lights on their nine tennis courts. At this time, we've postponed it a little bit since our tennis courts at the pavilion. We haven't come up with what we're actually going to do there, so we are in no rush to spend a quarter of a million dollars. So that's on hold. Pickleball courts, um, we are entertaining the thoughts of bringing some pickleball courts over to Rainbow Falls. Morton Bridge, uh, Commissioner Souter, Commissioner Cook have talked about a bridge that was going to go over Salt Creek. We are going to use it as a fishing pier uh, based on some safety constraints, so we can no longer do that. So now we've directed um, our director to look into a different scenario where with some piers and decorative rock or gabion blocks, etc., over off of Salt Creek. We talked about our 2022 big list projects, what we're going to do at the driving range, what we may do at the teen center at Audubon, Marshall Playground, Pond Dredging at Fox Run. Uh, under new business, we had one of the athletic associations look to get involved in our brochure. We tabled that discussion for another particular time. And then we had a small request from the Sheila Ray. A couple members wanted us to reduce the fees. We said we are were, we were not going to reduce any fees. It's already been reduced. Then uh, we have a committee to hold that we did today, today being February 25th. Um, and we started at 6.30, so it was just a half hour discussion. Bob's going to talk about it later on um, a program and travel lodging policy. Most of it goes through the athletic associations, but we do have some programs within the park district that use that could use a lodging policy. As Tom alluded to, we had another discussion on the dog park, and then under old business slash new business, we brought up a discussion I had with the village. Am I missing anything? Athletic Committee, Commissioner Bietke. So through the work of leisure services and business services, there is now um, a policy uh, going forward with uh, youth programs and also uh, within the park district and also uh, sports programs. But it's a policy that discusses uh, lodging and how how it goes about and um, in, in doing it. I guess the biggest thing that the biggest part of this is that it's it needs to be in the budget. And I know the finance department, business services is always working with all of our programs to make sure that they put together a nice budget and that they implement their budget and stay within their budget. But there would be through fundraising dollars for programs that they could now fundraise for, uh, to help with the travel expenses. Um, <clears throat> and so this would, uh, this all puts it all together through fundraising and, uh, and, and um, for overnight, overnight stays. So uh, that is, uh, was approved today, that's going forward. And it, it's nice because it'll be used throughout the, uh, the park district, not just for athletics, as I said, but for other park district programs. Anything else anyone wants to add on that? Uh, next, going forward, um, with the restrictions being reduced with the, the numbers in, in the state of Illinois and specifically within our region uh, being dropped, going down, we're uh, able to do a much, much more. So it's very exciting. Uh, basketball, basketball uh, was able to put together a, uh, a clinic. So uh, they were unable to play, have games going forward, but uh, they were able to do clinics. And so that is currently in session, and that is ending in three weeks. So I'd like to uh, thank the basketball board and our uh, uh, supervisor, uh, Brian, for putting that together and uh, getting that going. Softball registration is currently open, and that closes on March 12th. Baseball registration is currently open and closes on March 8th for drafted teams, 9U and up, and March 29th for non-drafted teams. Uh, football is having a, uh, a program going forward for eighth graders right now, which is great, so that they still can get involved with the program before they go on to high school. But football and cheer, their registration opens next week. Um, 
please do not uh, you know, delay, get registered right away. You can register online uh, through the park district or you can go to our customer service <coughs> location which is located at the pavilion and is also located at, at the hand door. Uh, but please take advantage of that and we're all excited that we're gonna get everyone out and, uh, and get everyone uh, active again, so thank you. Any questions or comments for Bob? I just have one, uh, and I wanted to confirm that we still had a consensus. Over the years, between Mike Wick and Ron and Jimmy Cavanaugh and Brad Wessel and Brian, a discussion started through Tammy Miller and Jeff Collier that as we were transitioning from the athletic associations and bringing them in-house, that Tammy and Jeff and even us agreed that maybe there'd be five members, four ambassadors. We didn't really come up with the number, but we said it was gonna be a manageable amount. So we still have some boards that have seven, eight, nine members that make it really cumbersome. And you know how our discussions can get with five members where it also takes us one or two people to sidetrack it even though a consensus has been made. Well, certainly that happens in these athletic associations. So are, are we ever gonna, we as a board push back down to them that says it is, it is okay that we are going to start getting back down to five board members. You know what? Or, as Bob alluded to on some other discussion, I think it wasn't that we were ever, never going to kick anybody off, but when there's attrition, when a, a membership ended, that we weren't going to replace that person, that we were going to go from seven to six, and if another person's term ended. So, any other comment or feedback? I don't know what, what the issue is with the size of the, bo size of the board. Um, it's hard for some of the consensus to come on. The meetings go from one hours to three hours. Some of the board members that aren't doing anything, and you can speak being on the football board, and hopefully you know you guys had corrected it, but there are some board members that actually have an elected position you know, or, or title that aren't contributing much, yet they actually cause a little bit of dissension amongst their boards. Uh, the effort's not there. Um, I think staff has identified what they can do internally better than what some of the ambassadors can do, and they still want that challenge of doing that. And so now that the programs are you know, brought inside, at what point do we take more of a leadership position? Because right now, it's more, we tell them some boards to do something and it's still not happening. That we just don't have that iron rule. And I don't want an iron rule. I want cooperation, but again, I, I can't say. It's just that it's just what I'm hearing. So, you know, I've talked to Bob. You're, you've been on the athletic committee, so um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if Tiffany talks to somebody, you know, she can give us a better idea on why there's a benefit from going from nine to five or seven to five. What? Don't who's know. got nine? Soccer, I thought, had up to nine. Yeah, there's a few. I put together a list that I'd be more than happy to share. I mean, I, I don't see, you know, like the village is seven. So once you start getting past seven, I get a little itchy, but I don't want, I don't think, personally, I don't think we should be kind of adjudicating that with them um, unless it gets out of hand. And well, it gets again, out of I, hand, I guess we'd have to address, you know, I can't speak for all five of the past athletic coordinators. Maybe Jeff can give us a better feel. Maybe Tiffany can. But you know, one of the things that I know of that happens is the same thing. When you have a title, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a treasurer or you're a fields person or you're in charge of the umpires, the reps, or something like that. You know, all staff has to be respectful of that title, so they can call our staff at any point, and they they expect cooperation. Well, when you end up having seven organizations or six of them, and there's nine members, fifty different phone calls are coming in. It'd be nice if only. Two or three of the people could, could handle that role and not be burdening our staff, you know, at all times of the day with 60 different titles when 25 may do it. Or maybe it is just well, getting well, maybe to you leave the boards alone in terms of numbers and, and kind of create a policy for each of the programs that one person communicates with staff. That's a yeah. great idea. I don't know. There are so, three there are three boards with ten. So football and cheer, soccer and softball all have 10. The smallest board is travel baseball. They have six. Um, house softball has nine. Basketball has eight. 
So the boards are rather large. I think football's nine in that on the board right now. I know you're not. I still counted ten, not counting. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you want, well, if this helps, and then I, again, I'm not cutting you off, Ralph, but I certainly want to hear from the other three commissioners. But at some point, can you talk to Jeff and you know what what the history is on why I believe staff wants to actually downsize some of the boards? I mean, it was Tammy's decision to go that route. It was Jeff Collier's. I want to know if Jeff still feels that way. What your personal opinion is, Tiffany, without putting you on the spot, what yours has been. So if you guys can get together and tell us what you guys would like, because we do want to make this work, and yet we do want to show respect to the ambassadors of these associations. But if there's some kind of disconnect that's happening, and through five athletic coordinators, I hear there is a disconnect. Um, that's all. So the, the, just a couple things. So the first, I think I'm trying to... Re go back when this whole Paderma thing came out and, and it was a discussion because there was a discussion of limiting or reducing the size but not kicking people off. But I also think that was also tied to a point that we still haven't really resolved which we can go back into was the appreciation part. Was that was one of the reasons why we wanted to keep the numbers at, at somewhat a manageable was because of the appre appreciation piece of that. But at no time were we going to kick people off. Is when their memberships expired or when they left, we would then look at um, like can can a position be absorbed within the within the group uh, to kind of control it. I, I believe the discussion went, and I know I don't know if Ralph. Yeah, I mean that's the sense of it. But my, my point is going to be, and let's take football for example, because I, you know I was at a lot of their meetings last year and, and was involved in the program. The ten. We're talking about volunteers, okay? So the 10 positions have functional roles. I can't think of anybody in the football program last year that didn't pull their weight, right? So they needed 10 people. By the way, football's got football and cheer too, so it's right. a little bit different. I know. But, but I, I, if you reduce the size of the boards, that's just going to make fewer people doing the same amount of work. Or the park district doing more. Well, or the park district doing more. That's a possibility, but and that's I just what I think they're a, saying. That I don't they want to put do. them in a position where they're doing more the same work for with fewer people because it's going to end up being more work done. The one thing I want to point out is basketball. So basketball, they their members they staff the the gym uh, the gyms on uh, the field house and the room on Fridays and on Saturdays. And I, I know they try to you know spread the wealth and they all dole it so they're not all working every weekend the entire evening and all that. So I, like I'd be interested to go back with this information and just ask them what what can it take to you know can you reduce or and let them they, they might come back to us and say no because that you know they, again like Ralph said they are volunteers. So I, I think we just need to maybe we'll take this under the we'll take this under the athletic committee. We'll work with Leisure Services and Brian, and we'll we'll try to figure out the expectations of every board. You know, my concern. You sit there. You you made a comment that the meetings are going an hour and a half or, or longer. So I, I want to make sure. Do we need to do uh, some PD professional development on uh, you know putting together a an agenda and and sticking to the agenda and and you know allowing members to, to speak their mind, but at some point cutting it off and, and moving forward. So is it a PD piece that we need to implement? I, I don't know, but maybe we just take everything, everyone's ideas and suggestions, put it into leisure services hands and, and have them kind of figure everything out and come back to us, maybe come back to the athletic committee with uh, some suggestions uh, for improvement. This, is a, this chart was just done three days ago. This is a project for Anna. So yeah, and, and one of our next committed holes, it doesn't have to be two weeks from now, it could be a month from now, but yeah, I'd like to know what Ben's opinion is, and Tiffany's opinion, and Jeff's opinion, and you know what, if you guys are saying, no, this is fine, you know what, we're comfortable with this, then, then that's great. If all three or four of them are like, you know, here's the reasons why, I certainly would want to hear them. And, so isn't um, Jeff in a different department now? Yes. Yeah, but he has a strong yeah, back. He has a strong back. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Okay. So, yes. yeah, one of the things I'll just add that I've talked with Tiffany and Brian about is working with the presidents as your point of contact. So it lessens the amount of people that are calling him. 
brought everything through the presidents, so he doesn't get calls from coaches and treasurers and anyone else, because that could be cumbersome. It so, doesn't have to be the president, though, just a representative. Right, but the president could start, being the vice president can, you yeah. know, but that will help the amount of, you know, I'd call um, people contacting Brian, and um, that could help organize it, too. So. Well, yeah. it, it sounds like Tiffany and, and Brian are working on something, yeah. so I would say just bring it back to the athletic <coughs> committee, and then we can discuss it, and then we can bring it to everyone then. Well, well not just a so volunteer has to be on the board. I mean, you can volunteer to be running the equipment, not I don't have to be on the board to be an equipment manager in charge of the equipment. I mean, so maybe I don't know how it got so big. But it, I don't yeah, know. okay, so the, I, could, I could name off most of the positions in football, to use the example. All right, flag is no longer a board position, but when I'm off this board, I might get out of that. Who knows? That's so they'd have a lot of love in them. Um, President, I don't think there's a vice president, is there? Rob. Oh yeah, Barrett. Vice president, you could probably do away with vice, not Rob, but vice president. <laughs> but, but I think that has a lot to do with the continuity. So that would be the only one that doesn't have a f true functional role, as far as I'm concerned. The rest of them, you know, ways and means, cheer. Um, the league coordinator does a ton of work. Going but you're both right. It could be the chain of command. Like right. I said, maybe right. he doesn't have a title. You can still have the position, but but who know. no? I mean, those people need to have a say in what's going on, though. Right. But, but they, then they go to the, they, their board member. The board? They go to their board member and have talk it out with their but board what I, member. What I'm hearing is it's their volunteers. To me, it sounds like it's professional development. We need to go back and maybe just have everyone understand how agenda and how a meeting is run so that, that we stay within a certain time frame. Because Brian adjusts his hours. Like Brian's not just, as far as I understand, he's not a, a nine to five guy. He, you know, he might come in at two o'clock because he might have to work till 10 o'clock at night. So I guess maybe he could, you know, he's gonna be the best person to, to figure things out, so. All right, let's, let's get away from the Brian thing, especially because of the connection. This isn't a Brian thing. This is five other athletic people, but it's our counter on registration. You know, it, it, it's the phone calls coming in looking for things. It's the different people expecting Brad to cut checks because they have a different position. It's, you know, hey, I have authority to be on this field and you don't, you know, because they have a title. There's, I, I can think of, you know, tons of different reasons why but I'd rather still hear it from staff because, again, I have a full-time job. I don't know what's going on on our ball fields and stuff like that. I just thought that was the goal of staff four to five years ago. That's why I brought it up, that they were looking at smaller size boards and we haven't reached their goal. So if it's a consensus that we're never going to do it, we're going to tell them that we're never going to do it. But if they're saying they prefer smaller size boards, then we got to come up with reasons why we prefer not to if that's what the athletic associations are telling us, that's all. All right, so I won't mention any of the details anymore, but I will say this, that I don't want to undo any of the goodwill that's been developed over the last two years through this process by coming at the, these volunteer uh, people running these programs, or you know, boots on the ground. Uh, I don't want them to feel like we're coming down on them. Either do I. That's why, you know, when Bob thought that, you know, we were never going to tell somebody that they're on the board. But when there was a vacancy, did that vacancy need to be filled? Or could that role within that organization be, you know, what, um, either given to the park district if they didn't want to do it and park district would accept that role or responsibility? Or could it be shared amongst the other board members? That's all. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's a discussion and not a mandate, I'm okay with it. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to mandate anything. Uh, as I started off this entire conversation, I said, can we talk about it so that we have some kind of consensus? And they are. They'll come back to us. John, Tom? Yeah, wait and see what, the, what they come back with. Okay. I get your point. I mean, 10 and 11 and 9 seems like a lot, but, you know, if everybody's pulling their weight, then you're going to take nine duties into five. So let's just see what they come back with. I agree. I, I believe I was one of the ones that challenged staff that proved that you can do it. You know, that when you lose those volunteers, you know what, you, you're going to need, you know, I think you came up with that stat, Bob, that one of the things that you're going to need like 
four different, you know, athletic coordinators to do all the responsibilities that's, you know, what the volunteers were doing and stuff like that. But we also have to remember since, how long is it was when Perderma came? Two years ago. And we've been shut down for a year because of COVID. So, I mean, you really can't judge it right now. It's not the right time to judge that. I don't know, I guess. Golf course committee, Commissioner Walls. Um, Ralph, sorry. Sorry about the mix up. Uh, but we did have a golf course committee meeting last week. Um, the course obviously is closed and will be closed. Um, we always encourage in the spring, um, we've, we've had this talk every year and we'll have it again this year and next. Um, make sure you call a course first because, because your yard looks green and dry doesn't mean the course is. So we're not sure we can open up this weekend for sure we won't. But just call ahead. It'll save everybody some time and headache. Um, so, so far, uh, Tom feels like he's got a pretty good handle on a lot of the outings that are returning. Um, we are going to lose the, the, um, the banquet facility piece of it, um, but he believes that, you know, in helping these outings steer them towards um, local restaurant areas or whatever, uh, the major concern is they are coming back to Fox Run and they will have a tournament. Um, he's been working on that. <clears throat> he did bring up the fact that uh, most or all Brad of our leagues are coming back. Yes. Yeah, all of our leagues are coming back. Um, he did make a mention of uh, possibly adding a league, and I, I kind of just want to say I put the warning out, um, and it's my personal opinion, is there's a very fine line in golf courses that uh, you can get yourself – known as a, a league course and it's really hard to get residents or your regulars to come out on an afternoon and just kind of goof around and i understand we're looking to drive revenue we got a very expensive clubhouse everybody's excited about it i just i just warned tom it's my opinion like just make sure you still have some spots open for that good day uh where some of your regulars or your residents who are footing the bill for a lot of this stuff um can get out on the course i just don't want to see it, us turn into a, a five or six day a week league, league course but that's just my opinion um and as far as the buildings going if you haven't been over there drive by plum grove road it's starting to really take shape you can really see now what the building is going to look like the architecture you can see the layout um it looks pretty good they're moving pretty quickly they were moving very quickly up until this last cold stretch um, but I think, uh, Brad, they're starting up again, right? Today being Thursday the 23rd? Yeah, they're picking up. I mean, never really stopped. Like you said, we've slowed down yeah. lately, but it's not stopped. So, and I do believe that the electronic sign was delivered, correct? We went off for bid. I don't know if it was delivered yet. Oh, okay. Just went off for bid. Just went off for bid? I thought I was told it was delivered, but anyway, it's, it's pretty encouraging for... Everybody that's gone by, and I've heard a lot of great things like, holy cow, I didn't know it was going to be that big to, you know, whatever the case is. But we'll get through a tough year with uh, that temporary trailer, which seems to be doing fine. But I'm really anxious to see um, that following year. I'm really anxious for the grand opening. So, um, And if you don't have any questions, that's all I have. I have one quick one. I'm not sure who to answer this one. The Fox Run website, couldn't we put, you know, where it says... Uh, book a tee time. I know you can't do that on golf now, but um, course is closed on the <coughs> website. Yeah, Tom does a good job of keeping it up to date. Um, I think it does when you do click on the book it now. It says that we're not open. Uh -oh. <coughs> I just did it. I will talk to him on that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think it should be. Just I know he does there. a pretty good job of keeping it, the website updated as far as if we're open or if we're closed. Especially this time of year, so I will double check with them. Okay. I had a question on, on the update you sent out regarding this um, golf simulators that are maybe going out for bid. <clears throat> are, do, do those have to go out for bid? Given that um, you could have different manufacturers with different type of simulators, in other words, where it wouldn't be specified, or are they all the same? I, I, as far so as they're, they're similar, but they're unfortunately they're not proprietary. 
the technologies, you know, um, not proprietary, where they only one company makes this, you know. So we're going to spec the simulator we like, and that should narrow down who can compete with that. But uh, unfortunately, it's not a single source. I, I could have uh, a pretty good conversation with Tom Hoffman about this. So even if it was proprietary, let's say, and that there's one manufacturer of the good, that's not to say another vendor couldn't sell it. And there's no way of verifying that there's only one person that sells that good. OK. And that's because it's not a service, right? I mean, that would be the it's not like IT service, yeah. yeah. Right. OK. It's okay. It's, you know, okay. We'll okay. Anything yeah. else for John? Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Youth Committee, Commissioner Bietke. So my favorite time of the year, it's youth scholarship time. So please make sure that you uh, you can go to the, uh, the library, the village hall, or the park district on our websites, all three of our websites. You can download the information for the youth scholarship. If you are a, uh, a, a senior, uh, this is a perfect opportunity because there's $7,000. There's actually, that's just with the youth scholarship, but then there's additional uh, scholarships that are offered within the village as well. So they really should take advantage of this opportunity. But the, the Park District uh, um, Foundation offers two $1,000 scholarships and the, the village offers five $1,000 scholarships for a total of, as I said, seven. So uh, take, you know, look into that, fill out your applications, get some recommendations, and, and turn those in. Uh, so we like to see a lot. We, typically, we get an average between 18 and 22. So I'm hoping to see that we blow that out of the water, and, and there's a lot so that we can, you know, offer, offer the, uh, this money to our, uh, to our residents. So that's all I have. Any questions for Bob? Thank you. Adult Center Committee, Commissioner Cook. Uh, yes, the Sheila Ray Adult Center uh, Advisory Board met on February 16th. Uh, they have now reopened and are slowly uh, getting more people to come back out. Uh, they have seven new members, so they're down from last year where they, where they were because a lot of people didn't re-up uh, given the COVID situation, but they have a 133 members uh, back uh, and starting to participate. Uh, they're starting monthly lunches. We'll resume in March. Um, they're planning a uh, June bazaar in the uh, parking lot. And the line dancing is back at the center along with Bunko, which will resume in March also. So it's uh, and the big bands will start in September. So they're slowly getting back back uh, to their pace and so check it out online the website uh, with the different activities that they have going on there and um, that's all I have to report. Any questions for Tom? Thank you. Old business. Um, I don't want to go into a whole lot of it until it becomes uh, formal but I have had a couple discussions with Mayor Johnson and on behalf of him and his board they have an interest in funding a lightning detection prediction system as long as we did the maintenance. So I felt that we had a consensus. So I've directed Ben to work with Ray Rummel on the details and all the questions that any commissioners may have on our behalf. Uh, maybe their trustees have a couple issues. But uh, moving forward, we are going to replace the ThorGuard with a ThorGuard-like system uh, moving forward. And nothing to ratify nothing to vote Ben is gonna give a presentation at a capitals meeting as Tom alluded to and then we'll move forward on that any any President O'Malley yes this is attorney Hoffman hi I Tom um, not very old business but uh, I'm suggesting a redo on tonight's approval of minutes as a roll on a roll call vote instead of a voice vote Okay. okay, based on the fact that we, uh, the pandemic thing? Yes, exactly. Everything has to be roll call. Okay. okay. And that was just uh, asking for a, a voice vote. That is correct. Yeah. And we would know that uh, after Pritzker gets rid of the pandemic uh, thing and it comes through the IAPD? Yes, hopefully that will happen sometime soon. 
Okay, so you guys heard that. Um, I don't have anything else under the old business discussion with the lightning detection system. So moving back to approval of the minutes, a voice vote will not do. So I do need a motion and a second to approve the minutes of uh, February 11th committee of the whole meeting and February 11th, 2021 regular meeting. And I'll remember this moving forward. Can we, we do that motion combined? That's okay. All right, I will, uh, I will make a motion that we approve the minutes of February 11th, 2021, both the committee, the whole, and the regular meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, that was my made the motion. Second. Yes, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> Kathy, roll call, please. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Thank you, Tom. We are yeah, at are new. We regular meeting minutes as well? Which yeah, one? we did them both. Yeah, we did them both. Committee of the whole and the regular meeting together. That's what Ralph was asking. Thank you. New business. I need a motion and a second for adoption of ordinance number 417. This is an ordinance providing for a combined annual budget and appropriation of funds for Elk Grove Park District, Cook County, Illinois for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2021 and ending December 31st, 2021. So moved. Second. We'll call, please. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. I need a motion and a second for adoption of ordinance number 418, an ordinance authorizing and directing the destruction of verbatim audio recordings of certain closed session meetings of the Board of Park Commissioners of the Park District. So moved. Second. We'll call, please. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Yes. President Yes. We're at payment of the bills. I have two sets. I've got February 9th, 2021 P cards in the amount of $63,009.20. February 10th, 2021 in the amount of $31,736.56. Any questions or comments regarding these two sets of bills? Hearing none, roll call. Uh, motion and a second. I will make that motion. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Bietke? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Before you go on, yep. I have a question. That's, I just have a question for Brad. This In this packet that we have for the Audubon net surplus, this is the financials for the indoor indoor uh, skate park, correct? For Audubon? Yes. Yes. So this is, the, just, this is just the indoor skate park? Yeah. Okay. We don't charge for the outdoor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, I need a motion to adjourn to closed session for the purpose of co conducting the semi-annual review of closed session minutes for 2C21 and also for a discussion regarding some personnel for 2C1. So moved. Second. Before roll call, we will reconvene to open session to release such closed session minutes as the board deems appropriate. Our next meeting date is March 11th, 2021. Roll call to adjourn to the closed session. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Wall? Yes. Commissioner Bietti? Yes. Commissioner Sauter? Yes. President O'Malley? Yes. Thank you, everybody. This meeting is now adjourned. Great. Right. Give me a moment.